Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. It's the first time you've seen me in front of the camera, so I'm a little bit nervous about it. But today we're going to attempt to cook a very posh cottage pie. You might be wondering, why is a cottage pie posh? Well, I'll find it. Give me a minute. Got it. When I watched Gary eat, he was eating in a very posh restaurant in London and I saw these cottage pies I thought I'd like to recreate those because they look fabulous. So I bought some of these from Amazon and I like a cake tin. So we're going to attempt to make cottage pies in these and turn them out so they should look really different. So let, we're going to give that a go. So let's see how it goes. So for this recipe I've got my own uh, beef which I'm going to put through my mincer there. And also, I'm going to make, uh, I think they call it a mirepoix. I don't know, quite know what the words are. And I'm going to put these through the mincer as well, but with a slightly coarser uh, grinding end. And then we're going to drop them in the pan. I'll come back to you once I've uh, tried to do this mincing, see how we go on. Okay, that's the mincemeat done. With a bit of taking it, so that looks alright. So I'll see if about they're getting the veg done now, but I'll just change the end, those bigger holes. Could I, I could use a food processor, but I'm going to give this a go because I saw somebody doing it. All right, there's the other one I'm going to try to see if we can uh, get the carrots and onions in there because I want very fine to make that mirepoix thing, which is the bit you mix with the meats to give it a bit of body. Okay, first thing we're going to try is an onion to see what happens, see if whether it actually works or not. I know there's a bit of meat still in there, but that won't matter so much because that'll all get cooked in the pan at the same time. Just, it's just a bit of an experiment. Let's give it a try. Well, it actually works. That's exactly what I wanted. Next time you see this, it'll be in the pan with some uh, beef dripping, which is what I'm going to use because the beef that I minced is very, very lean. And I want a bit of um, beef fat back in there because it's going to be posh after all. Right, I'll see you when I've got the pan set up and I'll just give that lot a clean. Okay, I'll just show you some of the ingredients now. There's the mirepoix that went through the mincer, that's all ready to go in. That's the mince meat ready to go in. That should be okay. And to go with that, we've got 300 ml of beef stock, which I made from two stock cubes, so we'll need to be careful on the salt here. Some uh, black pepper, some garlic that I've chopped which will go in towards the end because you don't want to burn that and the extra special ingredient is some miso paste which should be nice uh, give it a little bit more flavor and also added for a bit of sweetness is obviously the usual uh, tomato paste right I'm gonna get some of this into the pan and I'll come back to your shop okay I've just got my uh, beef fat melting in the pan just thought I'd uh, throw that in because I forgot to mention it and uh, that will be quickly followed by uh, the uh, mirepoix which is the uh, carrots and onions in this case have no celery and then the mince and then I'll come back to you once I've got that uh, starting to mix up okay I've got that sort of the carrots and the onions in there now with the beef back I just want to cook them until they go a bit soft because I don't want hard bits of carrot an onion in the in the beef. Uh, the whole idea of a cottage pie is about the beef, uh, essentially. So I'll come back to you when that's started to soften and I add the beef in. Okay, I've just put the meat in now. I'm just going to turn it through and cook the meat, probably 80%, somewhere like that. And then I'll add the stock and the miso paste and finally some chopped garlic and um, cook it until it thickens up and that's uh, the filling of the cottage pie complete hopefully yeah the water is reducing now in that mix I want to get rid of much of that as I can before I add my own beef stock in there which again I'll have to reduce but uh, yeah it's looking okay not a bad colour at all and it smells are getting nice as well do want to put a bit of colour on that mince uh, like I say, I've, it's been cooked uh, initially in uh, a little bit of beef fat because it was very, very lean uh, mince, which I made myself, which you obviously saw. But, uh, yeah. Nearly time now to put that uh, stock in. 
Okay, that's coming on okay now. Just going to throw in uh, two cloves of garlic. And I'll just show you that. I don't know if I can get it to the camera. Like I say, I'm all new to this. But you can see it's coming on. I just need that to thicken up because it's got to be quite thick for what I want it to do. And finally, now we're coming towards the end of it. Uh, the final ingredient is miso paste. It's going to get a teaspoon of that in there to give it that. Uh, it's a funny word, isn't it? Umami, whatever you, <laughs> you call it. But I'm going to put that in there. I know it makes a difference because I've tasted it. And then I'll show you the final mince uh, ready to be uh, used. Okay, we've almost achieved what I want to achieve. It sort of stands on its own at the top of the pan without it falling over. That's what we need it to do. Uh, I'll give it another couple of minutes and that will be the meat complete. And it tastes fabulous. Just needs to be a bit more firm and you'll see why. Okay, I've peeled the potatoes, I spared you from that and uh, about to boil them on the pan down there. When they're ready, I'll show you how I'm going to do my mashed potatoes. I'm going to use a potato ricer, which is something quite new to me, but we're going to give it a try. Okay, here's a boiled potatoes. Now we're going to put them through the ricer. I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you exactly how we go about it. Okay, here's a potato ricer. I'm sort of pressing. I did have a little go off camera but it didn't seem to work too well so we'll just have another crack at it and see what's going on. Apparently you put them in here and clamp and squeeze and you get, oh there we go, get mashed potato, well potato rice of some sort. What are we supposed to do with this stuff though? Not sure. But, uh, yeah, I'll give it another go on camera one more time and then I'll do the rest off. See how we go on. Uh, yeah, okay, I get the gist of it. Right, I'll come back to you when I've done them all. Okay, that is oops, that is how they look when they've gone through the rice machine thing. I'm now going to add a bit of cream, some butter, and whip them together, and we'll start construction of the uh, cottage pie with a northern touch. Okay, got all my ingredients together now. I've got my tins, which I have uh, just covered with a bit of olive oil to try and prevent them sticking. That's the beef that we did, uh, nice and stiff, which is what I wanted it to be, so it holds itself together, and the mashed potatoes. Now, I'll just uh, fill one of these, and then I'll come back to you and show it you, and uh, see how we go on. I'm gonna try to aim for about 70% beef, and then 30% uh, potato, but we'll see how we go on. Okay, there's one, it's roughly 70%, uh, probably a bit too much in there, but that's that's what I'm aiming for, quite compact. Uh, I'll probably get two out of it, it weighs quite a bit, but uh, I'll film the next one while I'm filling it, just so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so here's the second one, and I'm quite literally just cutting through. It definitely stiffened up like I wanted it to because I want it to be able to stand up on its own when we take this uh, cake tin off it. Or cake kind of tin anyway. But uh, you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm pushing it right in. Just so it hopefully holds itself together when we take it out. And that is pretty much how I've done that. Looks all right. I think so anyway. Okay, I'm now uh, going to put the potato on. I'll uh, just fi I'll film that while I'm doing it. See what you think. Um, I'm going to put like a base layer down. That's the idea. And then I'm going to try and do something with like a, a piping bag thing. I'm not sure yet, but I want it to look a bit different on the top. But uh, yeah, I may way too much potato here, but uh, yeah, I want to push it down into the tin like that. 
No air gaps, don't want gaps, don't do gaps. And in. Like that. Yeah, that looks alright. Pretty smooth. And I want to do something with the top, like I say, uh, which I've got to, to work out yet. I, mean, I want to try and thin the potato down that I've made and attempt to pipe a bit of a thing on the top. I'm not sure what yet, but you'll uh, you'll see when I do it. Okay, yeah, that looks like a cool way somewhere. Okay, right, that's that done. I'll come back to you when I've worked out what I'm going to do with the top. Right, you can see that my attempt at a little bit of piping, like little balls on top, which I want to crisp. I will video my other one. Uh, so, yeah, be ready for this. I've never done it before. So, move that. We'll do that. Not even sure how to hold this, but we'll go for it. I'll just shift them. So. I think that's how I saw some people do. This one's looking a little, I'm going to say a little bit better though. I'm not sure. The reason I want this is because on the ones I saw, oh here we go, that oh, way, they not bad. I run out of the one. Uh, they had a, something, a, a similar pattern on the top and what that did, it allowed it to crisp in the oven uh, and it looked real nice. But we'll have a go. It's sort of getting there, isn't it? A bit over the top, really. But yeah. And there, and there. Yeah. I'm happy with that. That looks alright. Okay. This is what they look like. Uh, not too bad. I'm going to put one of them in the oven now and I'll come back to you when that's cooked and we'll see if it does what I expect it to do with a crispy top. Right, that's uh, that one uh, now been in the oven along with the one that hasn't and some of the side dishes there. Next time you see it, hopefully, I put it on a plate and it's all stayed together like I wanted it to. Fingers crossed. Right, to go with my uh, posh uh, cottage pie, uh, I'm going to make a cranberry uh, gravy or cranberry jus or whatever you want to call it. So I've used some cranberry jelly there into a pan with some water, a bit of sugar and some stock cubes. Um, only because I didn't have any red wine. But anyway, that's a simple uh, go around. See how it goes. Here's an update on the uh, sort of cranberry sauce stroke jus. Look, it tastes absolutely fantastic. Uh, I, I can't believe it. That's literally three quarters of a very small jar of cranberry uh, jelly, two stock cubes and one tablespoon of sugar and a, uh, just water and then reduced down. And the colour is fabulous and the taste is amazing. That's a really good shortcut. I'll do that again. Hi, and thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed the cottage pie with a northern touch. It turned out really nice in the end and it tasted fantastic. Thanks for watching right to the end of the video. And if you did like it, would you press and give me a thumbs up or even subscribe if you'd like to see more dishes with a northern touch. See you again soon.